All right, welcome back to C Programming Skills Using Replit. I'm Norman McIntyre. Let's get started. Here our focus is on variables. This is going to be our introduction to using variables in your code. All right, so here we are in our standard project, right, the one that you get by default. And I said we're going to talk about variables. Uh, the first key skill we want to know is how do you do something called declare a variable. And of course notice this is a comment so I'm just putting this here as a comment. You wouldn't necessarily have to put this here. The way you declare a variable is you give what's called the type which in this case I'll say an int and then you give it a name. So let's call it how about num1. That's how we declare a variable. It's of a given type. In other words, what this means, the type defines the valid values. In other words, by saying this variable, whose name is num1 in this case, it can hold integers. That is, you cannot put a string inside of num1, but you can put a number. You can put an integer number because that's what this is. So that's how we declare it. After you declare it, later on, you can assign a value. So assign a value. In other words, we can say num1 equals 42, semicolon. So two steps here. Declare it and assign it. Now, it's very important to recognize you cannot use a variable until you declare it. Which there's some languages that you don't have to declare the language. I know a number of you have probably written JavaScript or written in um, other scripting languages and you don't have to declare the type of variable. But here you do. It has something called strong typing it makes sure when you create a box, when you create a variable, and remember a variable is really a box that you put things into. In this case, it says this box, this thing called num1, will hold an integer. And in fact, when we assign it, this equal sign says, take 42 and put it inside that box. Now how can we prove it to ourselves? Well, we could say printf num1 equals, gosh, remember our formatting, percent %i for an integer, backslash n. And so how about put num1 right there. And of course we run it and we see num1 is 42. You can also declare and assign the value at the same time. So we could declare and assign. How do we do that? We could say integer num2 equals 10. So here I've declared it. I'm going to have an integer called num2 and I'm going to go ahead and set it to 10. To prove it to ourselves, do a printf. We'll say num2 equals percent %i backslash n and put the value of num2. And of course, when we run that, we see num1 and we see num2. A lot of what you do as a software developer will be declaring variables to hold things. For example, suppose we're putting together a simple calculator where we have number one and number two. We might want to have an integer sum, right, the variable sum, and maybe we would like to say, sum equals num1 plus num2. So what the computer does, it goes into a num1, that box containing num1, and says, well, I'm going to get out of there a 42. Num2, I'll get the 10 out of that. I'll add those two, and that'll be my sum. And just to prove it, we'll do a printf sum percent %i backslash n sum we run it and sure enough we see a 42, a 10, and of course the sum is 52. 
So declaring variables is going to be a key part of what you do. And notice by declaring these variables, we can change them uh, as needed. So for example, I could come down here and say, how about num uh, 1 equals 52? And now when I run this, num1 was 42. Of course, here we changed it to 52. We added 10 to it, and that gave us 62 as the sum. A variable, by its very name, you can vary the contents. In other words, it holds something that can be changed. So originally it was 42. Later on in the code, it was uh, 52 and so forth. So it allows us to, to change things as we go through here. Now, this is different from earlier. In one of the earlier videos, we had a pound defined num. I think I called a number and set it to 42 or, or, or had this called this. Anytime it sees this, it'll see this. The, the, the idea here is you do it one time. In fact, sometimes people refer to this even as a constant value or a macro where anytime it sees number, it's going to always show it. So for example, why don't we put right here, we'll say, hello world, number percent I. And we'll put number right here at the beginning. Click on run. And we see it's 42. So here we've given a constant value. We've defined anywhere in your code that you see number, go ahead and substitute the value of 42. For a variable, we're putting variables where we need them. A variable is like a box. And as our code runs, we can change the value that's in that box. So again, we started with num1. We assigned it 42. Later on, we assigned 52, and so forth. So this is a very important point, and we'll be actually covering many more types of variables than what we're showing here. It turns out int is just one of the most common types of variables, but there are many others as well, and we'll be covering them later in the course. For this lesson, just make sure you understand the concept of creating a integer called num1 and another integer num2 and another integer called sum and in this case we added num1 and num2 put them in the sum and we printed them out remember you should type in this code and run it just like I'm doing here so thank you for making it through yet another video there's still more to come I'm Norman McIntyre thanks as always for watching.